In 1977, the UNLV Run and Rebel basketball team went to their first ever Final Four. A decade later, 1987, they would do it again. But in 1990, UNLV finally broke through, winning their first ever NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. They were led by one of the best players ever in college basketball, Wooden Award winner Larry Johnson. Also all Millennium players, Greg Anthony and Stacy Ogman. UNLV turned the college basketball world on their ear that year, pummeling perennial powerhouse Duke in the title game by 30 points, the largest margin of victory ever recorded in an NCAA championship game. That made the 1990 UNLV running Rebels truly a team to remember. We're very fortunate to have members of the 1990 national championship team with us here on a team to remember. And of course, Jerry Tarkanian, the head coach, the legendary head coach, Dave Rice, who was an integral member of that team. Larry Johnson, of course, won the Wooden Award. Anderson Hunt, who uh, had outscored everybody in that championship game. And here he is, the, the guy who came to practice with a hockey helmet once after breaking his jaw, Greg Anthony. Guys, thanks for coming. This, this is going to be good. What we should tell you is that the video that we're going to see of the Rebels run to the championship game is the first time these guys together are seeing it. So the reactions you'll see will be will be natural, and I think it's going to be pretty good. First though, Coach, I want to ask you, when you put this group together, did you think that you had a chance to, to win the national championship? You ended up 35-5, and five, but before the season, did you say we have a legitimate shot? We thought we had a real good shot because the year before we went to the final eight, and we had all five starters back, and we signed Larry Johnson, who was the top junior college player in America, so uh, we thought we had a real good shot. Well, I understand your junior college class was great because Dave Rice was also in that yeah, junior college right. class, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Larry, what about you? What, your decision to come to UNLV and, uh, and ultimately win that national title, you end up being the number one draft choice. What did it mean to you looking back on it after the fact? And it's 20 years later, and, and what are you still thinking about it? Well, you know, the decision was definitely the highlight of my, my, my career. I never thought that you always think that, you know, your career, you have this coming, that coming. Everybody wants to win an NBA championship. Everybody wants to be the, uh, the champs. But, you know, winning that championship, coming here, it was the highlight of my career, career, of course. Anderson Hunt, you shot the lights out most of those games. Have you ever been hot like that as a shooter? Yeah, back, back <laughs> in the neighborhood, yeah. But not no big, no, no big on stage like that, you know, playing with guys like Greg and Larry and Dave, it made the game much easier. Being a Las Vegas kid out of Rancho High School to not only win a state championship oh, with right the Rams, right? right? Yeah, right? But you won the national championship. What did that mean to you to win it for your hometown university? Well, it was huge. First and foremost for me, you know, I grew up a huge running Rebel fan and a huge Jerry Tarkanian fan. And so, uh, you know, as a kid, you used to dream about that. We didn't have pro sports in Las Vegas. So really, it was all about the Rebels. And, and, and I used to stay up till midnight to watch the replay of the game on the local network because you never got to see the, the team play and they, they had great teams but one thing I want to touch on what Larry said uh, the, the thing that made our team really special we had a great team coming back and then to bring a guy into the caliber of Larry what was most amazing about it I felt was how great a teammate he was because and I've said this throughout my entire career he's the best teammate I ever had when you think about how great a player he was you know, but his ego was never an issue out on the floor. And it really allowed all of us to kind of reach our potential as players. And that's what, what I, I felt made our team special. Before we get to some of the videotape, I want to ask Dave Rice, who's an assistant. He's on the coaching staff at BYU. You were a coach here at UNLV as well. Still being involved in college basketball, do you see any teams that could even compete with the 1990 Rebels? Well, it's an unbelievable standard that Coach Tark set at UNLV over the years. And Getting back to winning the national championship that year, Larry and I, of course, were the two new guys on the team. And Larry was heralded like he was, a top recruit in the country. And the previous year's team had won 29 games, had been to the Elite Eight. They were a step away from the Final Four, but like Coach Tark talked about, five starters back. So it was interesting to see how that was going to be handled. And I remember how unselfish Larry was. I remember media day and asking Larry, well, how are you going to fit in? There's five starters back. You won 29 games last year. Larry said, you know what? I'll just be the best sixth man in the year. And I think it just says what Larry's all about, and uh, was just really special. And everyone knew there was a huge part for Larry, but for him to come in, and I, as a coach now, when your best players are among your hardest workers, and when your best players are among your best teammates, and they're as good as these guys were, 
you've got something really, really special. That's what made this team so great. My concern, what the only concern I really had was we had five starters back and went to the final eight. One of the five was not going to start. We knew that. Everybody knew that. Uh, Larry was the top junior college player in America, and he was good enough to start for any team as a freshman. So my concern was, how was the one guy who didn't start, how was he going to handle that? And a lot of it was depending on what type of person Larry was. And when Larry first came to town for the summer, we got him a job at the sporting house. And the very first day the TV cameras came and interviewed him. And I'll never forget this. And they asked Larry, Larry, everybody saying, now that you're here, you're going to make the difference and this team will move on to the Final Four. And I heard Larry say this, and I couldn't believe it. He said, I'm so happy to be here and be part of this team. He said, I watched him play on television every chance I got when he was at Odessa. He said, they're such a great team. He said, I'd be happy to help them any way I can. If I have to come off the bench, I'll be happy. So I, I said, God, that's really great. When a guy says something like that, nobody can be upset at him. And, you know, Larry was that type of guy. He, he united every team that he's ever been on. I remember when he went to the New York Knicks, Jeff Van Gundy called me and asked me what Larry was like. And I told him, I said, he'll be the best guy you've ever coached, attitude-wise. And about two or three years later, Jeff called me and said, Coach, you're absolutely right. He's the best teammate in the NBA. And the coach who's now at University of Virginia, Bennett, uh, what's it? What's it Tony, Bennett. Tony, Tony Bennett. Bennett. I've interviewed Tony Bennett on a radio show two or three times. Every time I interview him, he says, Coach, he says, you talk about Larry. He says, I've been telling everybody he's the best teammate I ever had. And that, that type of thing just spread throughout the whole ball club. We became the most unselfish team in the country. I remember Billy Packer used to say on TV, the Rebels need to lead the nation in hugs. Because every time a guy made a great play, everybody's hugging each other. <laughs> and I think that started with Larry and it spread throughout the team. And it, it was just, uh, you know, it, people say, is that the best team, one of the best teams ever? You know, certainly we played like it. But, you know, you look at the players we had and what they did when they left. You know, we weren't like the Michigan Fab, Fab, Fab Five or the UCLA teams or... Uh, the Carolina teams with Jordan Worthy and uh, Perkins, but I don't know if anybody played better than we did. That was the key. I mean, we were a unique team that played great defense. We led the nation in field goal percentage shooting wise, and we were not a great shooting team. If we had any weakness, it was our shooting. We only had one pure shooter, and that was Anderson Hunt. And uh, But we had just a great all-around team with that was so unselfish and had such a great attitude and and we played harder than anybody in America. We practiced harder and we played harder and that's what made him a great team. Anthony has Butler. 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 Jump shot. Butler now to hunt and Butler to finish. He's got it. That'll do it. And of course the enforcer in the middle, David Butler, when you talk about 20 years ago, you were in the middle 